This week on New Media Tech, it's going to be a quick one. Today was WWDC, and uh, we've been working in the studio all week, so we're going to talk a little bit, a bit about that. Uh, and this week, we're going to continue down the audio path with uh, upgrading your audio software right after this. <laughs> Hello and welcome to episode number 13 of New Media Tech. And this week, we don't really have a lots of things to cover because today, which is Monday, uh, the 10th of June, was WWDC. And we spent uh, quite a bit of our time today actually uh, watching WWDC and talking about it. So... Uh, we are going to. I'm going to mention a couple of things uh, about that. You know, this isn't really the show for uh, Apple or Macintosh or iPhone sort of th- like things like that. But there's a couple of things in there that maybe I'll mention uh, that are kind of interesting that could affect uh, the new media stuff. So um, last week we took a look at upgrading to a soundboard, and I mentioned I was going to start doing some videos on how to set them up, and I have started that this week. Um, I haven't finished, in fact, I haven't even started editing them yet, but I did record in the basics of setting up a soundboard, and I have a few drawings I want to add into the, the finalized video that I have to do yet, but probably in the next week or so, I'll have a video out on how to simply, or how to connect a simple soundboard. Uh, I'm going to use the same one that I had here, because they're all basically the same, uh, and can going to show you how you connect it up and get it into your computer. Now I'm actually going to use these little dongles that I showed you before and all that kind of stuff. So I'm um, thinking about putting together some kind of hardware package where you get the cables and everything that you need to do it right. Um, that will make it a lot easier because going into a small interface like that, there are some little cabling issues and things you can do to help keep the noise down. And I want to make sure that you have um, good stuff. So I'm working on putting that together as well. So that's something from last week. And I'm probably going to do a small uh, video set on uh, configuring and using the soundboard addition to plugging it in. Um, I have not done that yet. So that's to me I'll try to do in the next week or so as well. So that's all in progress as time permits. Now there's one thing on the news item list this week. And we mentioned this last week and it's very important. We're going to keep talking about this uh, for the next five weeks now because this is the second week. And that is we are moving our YouTube channels into one channel using a playlist inside of the YouTube channel. Up to this point, all of our shows have had their own YouTube channel, which in when initially setting things up, it made sense to us because somebody who's watching this show might not be interested in the Arduino stuff. Uh, we didn't want to you know, force that down somebody or get notifications all the time because of our other shows. So we didn't, we weren't aware of the playlist feature inside of YouTube. We weren't, we hadn't used YouTube a lot. So uh, we figured the simplest thing to do was create a separate channel. Well, ends up being that actually wasn't the best way for us to do it because we want to start doing some YouTube live and which channel do you use? If you do it on one, it makes sense to have the other ones on there. So it's one of those things where we're moving it all into one. So I mentioned this last week, the YouTube channel for uh, Let's Make It, which is youtube.com slash TZ Let's Make It. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, TZ slash new media is going to remain, but we're going to only put videos on it for the next five weeks. After that, we're not going to really take the channel down. We're going to leave it up because it has a uh, good following in it. But the new shows after in five weeks, in fact, episode 17 will be the first one that will only be published on the new channel. The new channel is easy to remember. It is youtube.com slash TV. And all our videos will be in there, and you'll see that we've already set a playlist already. And as we're putting them onto our website, we are already using the new YouTube channel already. In fact, we just put out a new show for the first time last week, and it is only going up on this new channel. It won't have its own separate uh, channel on YouTube. And it's we have two more coming out uh, to be released this week, and they will also only be on this new channel. So if you're watching this on the YouTube channel, that is uh, TZ New Media, then you need to go to youtube.com slash TV and subscribe over there. Now, the other thing is we can't start doing YouTube Live until we get a 1,000 subscribers. 
and we on each of our other channels we were, were, were well past a thousand subscribers so we could have taken any of them and, and activated it <coughs> but on the new one we are asking everybody to go back over there and resubscribe so we can get it over a thousand and it seems like it's going a little bit slower than what i've liked uh i know we mentioned last week about this on all of our shows about things moving over and we just need everybody to go out and and do that so that's something I'm going to keep reminding you about. I'll remind you before you are done watching this video one more time at the end, just to make sure you go and you do that. So um, that's affecting all of our all of our shows are doing that. So there is one other news item, and I'm, I didn't want to mention this last week because I didn't want to make it too premature, but it's definitely happening. We are actually creating another broadcast network for the internet, and that doesn't mean Tech Zen TV is going away. The issue is we have some shows we want to do that aren't technology related and it just seems weird in fact we did one this past winter uh on american idol and it just felt weird having american idol on the texan tv network so that's the only reason we're creating uh, a separate network and they will be they will also have text and tv shows out there but we have a number of other shows that we want to do that are not technology related and that's just only only way that makes sense to us to do that is to create another uh network and we're going to be actually looking for additional shows to bring on that maybe already exist and we're looking for some kind of expansion. And uh, we're in that process now. We're actually talking with a couple of people about that already, and they will be coming on to that network as well. And they're not technology-related um, shows. And I don't mind bringing on other people's technology shows on that network either. Um, it's for anything, really. And we're not going to close it down to just our stuff. And, uh, I mean, we'll be the broadcaster and the producer and stuff like that, but... Uh, if somebody has an art texture that they maybe are right now only doing in audio form and like to move into video but don't want don't have the, the ability to spend the money for it to get all the equipment that you need and you just want somebody to do it for you that's kind of what these other shows are right now they want to take it to the next level but they just don't have the funds or necessarily the knowledge or the know-how to be able to do it so we come in and help them out with that so that's coming up that's elixir tv and uh, probably in the next two to three weeks, we'll be mentioning it again when we get the website completed. That's all in process now. And, uh, but it's definitely moving forward, and uh, we do have some shows that are going to be going on there. That's, that's the plan. All right, so that's pretty much it for the news items. Now, I mentioned about WWDC. That was today. And um, it was kind of interesting. This is the first major overhaul of iOS 7, but that's not really the thing that I think would affect some new media. They now have their own radio. They call it iTunes Radio. And uh, I'm not quite sure how it's all going to work, if it's just going to be like a Pandora or if it's going to be more like a tune-in radio where you can have your own station and we could be broadcasting our audio, kind of like Stitcher. So there's still a lot to be up. What they showed basically looked a lot like Pandora and how Pandora works, which in that case may not really fit in, but they could be going to, to be mixing that up a little bit. So... Um, I'm really excited to look at that and see where they're trying to go with that and where it can go in the future and where it can affect, you know, new media broadcasting stuff. If you're a new media, like a music person, then yeah, you probably, um, will affect you some. So, um, that's just an interesting thing that happened today. I mean, it wasn't very interesting stuff with iOS, um, and even, um, their new naming so they ran out of big cats so now that's what they're going to either do the way they had today with some surfing location that's popular in california and uh but that's it was kind of interesting so what as well as the funny naming convention for uh, osx which is the new ones coming out some neat things in there too but you know no big wow things for me although i use a mac um i'm looking forward to that as well all right so you may notice at least to me i seem very dark uh on the monitor in front of me and uh, this last week, since our last show, I mentioned we were going to be doing some changing over of things. Um, not everything worked as planned, but a lot of it's been done. Uh, our lighting's been changed. We're still working on the lighting a little bit. Uh, in front of me, I have a whole different set of stuff uh, or more stuff than I had before to help me determine uh, what's going on. And where we came down to last week was mentioned about we're going to put a wirecast after after our ATEM switch to do the lower third graphics and you know D like a D DDR and things like that and I showed you the controls which works fine with the one exception I can't get the video out of the machine to get into the recorder which t goes to the stream and etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, ends up being and I think I mentioned this last week I have a Blackmagic mini recorder which brings video into wirecast beautifully 
and I got a USB 3 shuttle, which by theory should be beautiful as well. However, Blackmagic does not have USB 3 drivers for their shuttle. So I bought a brick, uh, or I have a brick basically. And uh, I have no way of getting uh, video out. I, somebody told me I should use Wirecast, just use the HDMI out of the mini, but that doesn't work. I had I did get, I have a USB 3 display adapter, but uh, Wirecast won't run on that monitor. It needs to run on the machine itself, so that limits me from that. So I'm still trying to figure out how to get good video out of that machine, and hopefully I'll figure something out by next week. But I will say that if I'm running it on the external monitor, um, everything works fine. Uh, it just doesn't look that great, which is what I'm trying to fix. So. Uh, hopefully next week that problem is solved, or I hope so. But you'll see some other things going on in the studio that hopefully uh, get corrected in time. <laughs> uh, hopefully by next week, and just a couple little things that need to be done in here, uh, moving some things around. Uh, the cameras probably need to be re-white balanced now. I think that's why probably why it's so dark because we did some changing the lights, and we're still not done changing lights, so it wouldn't do much good probably for this week anyways to go ahead and white balance it and have to do it again next week. Um, not that it takes that long to do, it's just one of those things I didn't get a chance to do that. But uh, I noticed the wall behind me is very dark, and that should be changed next week, hopefully as well. Um, moving a couple of the lights, the light we've been using for uh, what people say we call it the hair or the shoulder light, is just wasn't working well. It was actually too f far forward where it's at, so we're going to some lights that are back here instead. So um, just a little bit of changes going on in the studio still this week. All right, so last week we talked about soundboards, and I had a hard time deciding in the order of things what you should do is for, to make to take your stuff to the next level. What would you do first? Uh, and these, and based on last week and this week, this week we're going to talk about upgrading your software. Now, there's a ton of free software out there at editing, and the probably uh, the most popular is Audacity. Um, that's who I hear from so many people that are using Audacity to do their stuff. Well. Okay, yeah, it's not bad, but it's not great either. So one of the, I feel sound is very important, even in a video podcast, because like I will download video podcasts and I will watch them kind of off to the side, but I'm more listening to them. So I always think audio is the most important part of a podcast or any kind of broadcast. So the thing about Audacity is it's encoder. I can't remember the name of the encoder, but it's really edgy doesn't give you a nice smooth feel. So if I had to recommend the next step, and this came down to the sound border software, it was one of those things, and you gotta kinda decide what's more important to you, to get more channels in to your system because you need them for a guest or whatever, or do you not need necessarily more channels, but you could take the jump to better sound in the end. So there, what I'm going to, what I personally recommend for this is uh, Adobe Audition. It runs on both Windows and a PC and a Mac, so you, it doesn't matter what platform you're on. They work basically the same. I mean, it's the same way with like uh, Photoshop. They work pretty much the same on both both platforms. There, it's very easy to learn. Uh, I do recommend you go to somewhere like Lynda.com and watch the videos on it, just so you get a little bit of uh, comfort with using it. But there's some nice filters in it, and there's one uh, that most people <laughs> just use by default, and it's under compression, and it's called the Broadcast, and it's actually a multi-band compressor, and it really gives you that nice, solid radio sound. Um, and it, I mean, personally, I think it works better with men than women, but women still sound better, I think, than, the, than not using it. Um, but there's a ton of other things. I had no people that use GarageBand and, and built in the GarageBand is the ability to podcast. So it would make kind of sense that you would look at uh, GarageBand as a possibility. Um, I can't say I've ever even tried using GarageBand for doing a podcast. Um, I have played with GarageBand. I've done some basic things in GarageBand, but typically if I'm doing anything in audio in a Mac, um, I'm using something a little bit more powerful than, than GarageBand. So um, I do use a Adobe Audition on the Mac. Um, I don't, most of the time when I do my editing uh, for the videos and everything, I do that all in Premiere and it has a decent audio system in it as well. So I never really have to go back to uh, Audition uh, to do that. So um, you got to decide what's more important to you. I mean, definitely sound is important. That's the, I think that is the most important part said, of the podcast. And you have to decide at what point do you either need the soundboard or you need to upgrade to uh, better software. Now, I don't, I didn't check the price of Audition. 
uh, before I came in here. And uh, I know they do also have this cloud thing where you can get certain software as included for, you know, it's like $29 a month. And it includes more than audition. It includes other things as well. But that could be an option uh, as well. And it doesn't cost you like the big lump sum at one time. Although I don't think audition is very expensive. I think it's like in the 250 range. Last time I had checked, 250 $300, something, something similar to that. And it may be less than that by now. So uh, there are other audio programs. Uh, on the PC, I can't necessarily recommend one because I don't use a PC enough anymore uh, to be able to recommend one. But I'm just trying to say uh, at this point, if you have the ability, get off of Audacity. Now, um, I haven't, I don't, I'm not a big Audacity user. I do use it for very simple things sometimes. And that is do, I think what I recommend to get started for free. It's probably the best one out there that's free. Uh, as far as sound editing software. And somebody did tell me that there is a way you can change the encoder, although I'm not familiar with how to do it. You just want to change the default encoder. Uh, it's just very edgy sounding. It doesn't sound very clean. It's uh, kind of rough. So that is uh, the main thing that I wanted to talk about this week. This was the, as we're going through this, we're talking about right now, we're focusing on audio. So where do you go for the next step for audio? And the next step going forward for audio is to, uh, that's what we talk about a soundboard and this week we're talking about software and those two are how you get to the next level now we're going to go forward now to talking about um other things other than just improving your audio in fact we're going to start moving into some video as well but uh next week i think we're going to talk about where do you distribute your podcast at and there's a ton of different sites especially if you're audio only that will do uh podcast distribution so i'm going to talk a little bit how i do it i do it probably a lot different than most people because most people use some kind of service or something that's pretty common. I do a lot of it in-house using some other services, but I feed those services and do a lot of it in-house. And we'll talk about that because there's a bunch of different ways. And I'm going to focus on audio distribution next week, but we will talk about uh, video distribution in the near future as well. That's all coming up down the line. And I also have a couple of product reviews coming up. And I was hoping this week, I'd kind of reserve this week to go through the whole rework of the video insertion and, and putting ads and everything in and it just didn't happen i mean i've been working on it uh and it just i can't get it to work the way that i wanted to actually i can get it to work but the video is too soft and i won't i won't degrade the quality of the video so i'm trying to find a a better solution to get the to get the video out but that was what i was going to spend at least 30 minutes on this week and explaining how i did all this stuff uh for the switching so like I said, this week's going to be a little bit shorter than our average week just because we didn't have uh, a lot of time this week because working in the studio and then WWDC was today. So not really any good excuses, but we're just uh, uh, running a little bit behind with things this week. So um, I wanted to know where you would like, first of all, I'd like to know if you're heading, if we're heading the right direction, going step by step every week like this. And if you have anything in particular, now I want to start bringing in some more product type stuff to go through. And I'm going to jump in the video, which is a lot more stuff to talk about with video. There's a ton more stuff. But uh, if I go through my, my list here that's coming up, um, let's see, I have, well, some different mo models for making money with your shows. Uh, it, just there many different ways you can make money. Uh, like we're starting to make products like uh, if, if you ever watch our Let's Make It show, we have these uh, Arduino shields we're making now. I'm going to start selling. In fact, uh, in tonight's show at 9 o'clock Eastern, we actually are going to show these to put together and working uh, just because uh, we will make sure everybody thinks we're not, <laughs> we're not crazy. Um, so we're going to talk about hardware versus switch, software switching. For and This is more video. Uh, coming up. That's kind of what I was going to talk about this week. Uh, well, not necessarily to compare it, but to show you what uh, combining the two together can do. Uh, talk about some wireless video solutions. I want to bring in some hardware and show you that. I'm still working on the total workflow document as for um, for audio uh, and in the decision tree. That's coming along quite well, actually. Um, and it's actually bigger than I can show you on the screen. I have to keep moving around. So I got to figure out how I'm going to present that to people, but I got that pretty net making down pretty well. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about live streaming coming up and I'm pretty much going to focus on video because that's pretty much what I know as far as live streaming goes. I am going to research some audio only solutions, but uh, I don't do any of the audio streaming. So only the video. It's one of those things where I, I need to get some background before I can even really talk about it. Uh, how to track the performance of your show, uh, downloads, views, wah, things like that, uh, and some tools that we use. Plus, 
involving like I put things on YouTube and I can include that in my view count because it is, uh, as far as I'm concerned, a view. If the if YouTube says they viewed it, they viewed it. I don't know what the rules are around YouTube. But they got to watch it 25% or half or whatever it is. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, how and where to distribute your media. That's next week. We're going to talk about that. Uh, some remote guest solutions. Um, I use Skype, and actually I've been using a couple other things depending on the guests that recent, recently. Um, Skype has always been my go-to, but like last week, if you watched Let's Make It, Skype just wasn't uh, cooperating very well with us. It uh, Bob was, his audio broke up a little bit, but his video was frozen for the longest time. And uh, it did come back and fix itself. But there are other things. I've seen people starting to use Hangouts now. Now, Hangouts don't look as good. This is one reason that uh, I tend to veer away from them, or that's the main reason. Plus, it also has all this junk around it, so you get to scale it up. And I don't really have an easy way to scale it up with the current system. Now, I'm going to go to, to the Wirecast after the ATEM. There is a possibility I could do something with that, and I have to play with that some. Um Google Talk. We used Google Talk once, and uh, it wasn't. It uh, surprisingly was really good. Um, I haven't tried the new Hangout stuff yet. I need to do that. So that'd be something we can look at coming up in the future as well. Uh, let's see. Uh, room acoustics. Uh, I think I've talked a little bit about this room. Um, this room is full of foam the whole way around. Uh, the wall behind me, which actually can work. We're talking about sets too. It's another whole thing. Uh, the wall and the whole set in this room can be taken out in 10 minutes. So if I wanted to convert this back to a strictly 100% audio studio, it'd take me like 10 minutes to take, the, take everything apart and take it out of this room. Now, most of the things we do, like when we record uh, documentaries or whatever we're doing, we're facing the foam, so the wall behind doesn't matter. But if I bring some kind of band or something like that in, uh, or a guitarist, I'd take that stuff out just to keep the uh, echo down uh, from the acoustics and let the, let the foam do more of its work. I wouldn't take the trussing and everything down. I just take out the the flat thing on the back back wall. Uh, lighting, which um, that's gonna be a good one to talk about because I've actually learned a lot in the last couple of months. Uh, I grew up learning three point lighting. You know, uh, your key, your fill, and your your hair or your shoulder light behind. But that really isn't the way people do it anymore in, in video. And uh, I've been relearned. And that's part of what we're doing right now and redoing uh, doing the studio lighting is we're moving things around um, with a little bit better purpose than what we had before. Uh, I still have three-point lighting in the studio and that's going to stay because we do do some photography in here as well. Three-point lighting is considered artistic, so that's still uh, what people, most people are using to do, do camera type work, just not for video. Uh, we're going to talk about some free tools. And actually, I'm getting very good at these <laughs> to help keep you organized. Uh, things like uh, Google Docs. And I'm going to explain how we do it here and how a lot of other uh, broadcasters are doing it now using Google Docs. It's a, it's a great way, especially if you have uh, a guest, to keep everything uh, inexpensive, first of all, but very organized and it's great for collaboration. We're going to talk about uh, how to become interactive. Uh, this is one show that I can't say is very interactive yet because uh, right now it's only me and two of the people in the, in the chat room and that's not to me very interactive and nobody's really talking. So, um, but some of our other shows like let's make it has a regular audience that shows up. Now, one of the things I'm going to say that I've learned from experience is don't move the show. Um, when we originally started, we were doing Let's Make It on Wednesday night. We had um, another show which has two regular guests on it, or two co-hosts, and their only night was Wednesday night, so we moved that show to Tuesday, lost some audience, and now we've moved it to Monday. And we'll, um, we've lost a little bit more audience, so everybody catches up. So um, that's that's a learning experience. Um, I wish we had a little bit more interactive, but uh, we're getting there, and every week it gets a little bit better. And I kind of starting to see it get better and better and better. Plus, our interactive with our audience via email is is really doing well, especially on uh, two of our shows. It's really getting a lot. It'll be a lot of email, so that's very good. It's interactive, just not real live interactive. But we're going to talk about that a little bit. Uh, how to promote your show? We're going to talk about that. Some social automation, which we do social automation, and we'll talk about that. Um, social setup for your shows. Um, we're going. I'm going to tell you how. Well, it's how we're doing it right now, but it's how we're, we're moving away from. And it kind of goes along the same thing with YouTube, where we had a, a Twitter account for every show. That probably isn't the best thing for us to do. We had a Facebook fan page for every show. Again, probably not the best thing for us to do. It, it made sense when we did it because they're so different. Uh, but the more we do it, the more we think that was probably the wrong decision to make. 
So we're going to talk about some of that. And you can make the decision what you think about it uh, when we talk about it. Because it doesn't mean that what you were doing it and we're moving to is correct. Maybe the way we were doing it was better for you. And that's perfectly fine. So um, let's see. Down my list here. Well, I said about income, about how you different models. Also, we had to talk about the passive and not so passive income streams. Uh, do you stream live or do you do downloads only? That when do you decide to make the change to go streaming live versus download only? I know people that's all they do is downloads, and their shows are doing great. It's one of those things where you have to decide when is the time for you to go live. Um, I think live is where it's going to be in the future. Uh, especially as we get more and more cord cutters where people don't have cable or they're watching things um, off the internet, I think that's going to grow. That doesn't mean that the downloads are not going to grow. I think they're going to grow as well. In fact, they may even go faster than the live, but I think as live is going to start to catch on here very soon. It already starts catching on right now. All right, so that's the upcoming shows. And let's see, anything else? Yeah, we'll talk a little bit about these other apps too, like um, Google TV, um, Apple TV, which may be, from what I'm hearing soon, an Apple TV developer, which maybe that's just a possibility. And we're going to talk about uh, like Roku apps as well. Uh, we have a Roku app. We're going to talk about uh, what it's done for us because it's definitely made a huge difference for us uh, as far as viewership goes. We're over 12,000 downloads of the Roku app. Um, as of today and uh and it's still going and it's craziness um uh, it's it's amazing uh the, how fast that catch catching on and i will say that uh if you look at our stats our roku views are way up there towards the top of what's doing the views that's why uh, we're working on an ios and an android uh and a google tv that's we're all that should all be out here really soon so that's all coming up as well and we'll talk about uh maybe some ways you can get that created for you and uh down the most that's pretty much all I have coming up in the in the near future. Um like I said, this week's gonna be a very quick week and uh next week we'll have a lot more stuff prepared. In fact we already have stuff prepared for next week. This week's was uh pretty much the software and to go over what we were doing with software switching, which didn't happen. So if that does happen for next week, next week's show may be uh quite a bit longer actually. All right, again we want to remind you <clears throat> our YouTube channel's moving. And uh, it's moving to youtube.com slash techzentv um, for the next five episodes. They'll both they'll be posted both places. If you look at our website, though, it's only posted uh, on the new one. And uh, we, as I mentioned before, we do broadcast live every Monday night at 8 p.m. And I have some, hopefully, some guests coming up here soon as well. Uh, but uh, we broadcast live every Monday at 8 p.m. You can come watch us live at tech-zen.tv slash live or just go to techzen.tv and you can uh, click on the live link at the top. Plus we have a live chat room you can get in and interact with us. Um, I'm in the chat room all the time. Like I said, tonight there's only two other people in there with me and they just aren't very talkative. They're just hanging out in there. So um, definitely would like to have you come and you can always send us an email at newmediatech at tech-zen.tv uh, to send us an email definitely like hearing from our viewers and our listeners we definitely appreciate all the feedback uh that you can that you want to give us and if you have uh something you want to show us or ask a question uh you can do that if you want to send us a video maybe show us your studio setup uh that would be kind of cool too just send us uh, a link to the youtube video wherever you post it and uh it'll probably show up on the air eventually uh and uh if you have questions you can also send it that way or comments whatever uh it works just as well through video or via email Either way works great. All right, that is it for this week. We will see you next Monday at 8 p.m. Come in and chat with us. See ya.